too. But when we talk about this Roth conversion, because it's it's a big topic, we get that question a lot. And a lot of times people just don't understand. Does it make sense for me? And we know today we're not giving tax advice, but how can somebody, whether they have uh, they're a do it yourself or they have an advisor. And as you said, CPAs are more like history teachers. Right. Nobody's really helping them understand the maybe the short term pain of paying some taxes now for that long term benefit, not just for them but maybe their spouse and their beneficiaries. So how can somebody who doesn't really understand that formulate that in their mind that it may be okay to pay some taxes today for the long-term benefit? You just hit the secret to this book. So you, there's over 400 pages here, but that's the secret. The secret to keeping more of your money, pay the taxes up front. It's counterintuitive. How do I pay less tax? By paying more up front. But if the, the key point, that's the secret to the whole book. You know, Andrew, like some books, they tell you there's a secret. They, it's at the end. You have to get it. Or sometimes they tell you there's a secret and you have to figure it out. They never tell you what it is. Uh, by the way, uh, one of the books I read all the time, the classic from Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. That's one of those books. He tells you every chapter there's a secret to being rich, but he never tells you what it is. You don't have to read the book. I'm going to tell you right now what that secret is. Whatever you have in your mind, whatever you, the mind can conceive, it can achieve. You know, if you can think it, it can happen, but you have to have a plan and take action. All right. Now I told you that whole book. You don't even have to read it. I don't have to worry about the secret. That's kind of the secret to this book. I mean, getting the money out, the key principle in all good tax planning is to always pay taxes at the lowest rates, which may be right now. Plus the Roth IRA, which is my favorite area. And a lot of CPAs, by the way, don't like the Roth IRA. Do you know why, Andrew? They don't like clients paying taxes up front. That's how we're trained as CPAs. Yeah. Uh, in fact, from the first day in college in accounting, they hit, they beat you over the head. Never pay a tax before you have to. Always defer, 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 put it off. I always say, you know, if, when you were a kid and your mother told you to do something and you said, not now, Ma, I'll do it later. You would have been an accountant because you were trained to defer, to put things off. Uh, but the secret is to get rid of the problem because if you ignore it, let's say you do nothing. And that's the accountants. Most accountants are short-sighted thinkers because they think they're saving clients from paying tax by not having the pain up front. But if it's a lot less pain, if you do nothing and you just ignore it and you might love it, look, your IRA, your 401k, it's going up and up. But what if I told you every time it goes up, it goes up partly for the government too. They get a cut, they're a partner. Think of your IRA as a joint account with Uncle Sam. Every time it goes up, they get half until you do something about it. So you just can't ignore the problem. It reminds me about a, uh, a saying they have up in my dentist's office. Uh, it's a common thing. You see it on all the dentist's office. It says, uh, ignore your teeth and they will go away. Uh, <laughs> it's the same thing here. It's the same thing. This is why you go to a dentist and you get your teeth cleaned and fixed up. Because if you ignore it, uh, yes, you can avoid some pain now, but it's not going away. You're gonna have worse problems with root canals and implants and decay and all that. I just got the look talking to from my dentist. I just started going back after a long time and I gave him a copy of this book. And he told me, he says, you know, I could write this book. I would call this the new tooth decay time bomb. People are gonna lose all their teeth because they're not doing the maintenance up front. So it's the same kind of thing. It's going to be a lot more expensive when you go to that dentist later, root canals and implants, and a lot more painful. It's the same thing. I told him when he said that, I said, I'm going to use that analogy in my programs. It's the same thing with the tax. That's a decay. That's like plaque and tartar uh, stuck on your IRA. Think about it that way. Wouldn't you want to get rid of it if you could do it at a low cost now? So there is a cost. You just can't move from forever yeah, tax yeah. to never tax in a Roth conversion. But you could time it a little over each year to get that money out, bring that taxable debt. That's what you have in an IRA. Think of it as a loan, a debt owed back to the government, sort of like paying off a mortgage on your house. The quicker you do it, the minute it goes to the Roth. Yes, there's some pain up front, but nothing 
uh, that will be anything like if you do nothing and it all builds up here and then you go into collect in retirement and when you're the most vulnerable, when the paychecks stop, when you're going to be the most vulnerable to higher rates. And at that point, that's not the time to realize, hey, I only have half the money I thought I had. Maybe rates went up to 50%. So you could be in bad shape. So that's the theme of the book. Get rid of the problem now. You hit on the very secret. And as you know, that's what we train. And it's not for everybody. That's why they need an advisor like you to evaluate what's best for most people. But I would say for most people to have, uh, to, to use another analogy, as you know, with investments, it, you, always, you always hear the saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't invest all your money in one stock, for example. Same thing here. Why would you want all your eggs in, that you're counting on for retirement in one big, giant, taxable basket? Right. Diversify, have some money. I call it tax risk diversification. Spread the risk out, have something in tax-free territory as a hedge against the uncertainty of what future higher taxes can do to your standard of living in retirement. And that's the theme of the book. And, and you always, you hit on, instead of having the government plan, have your plan. Yeah, I always like to say that. I said, you want your plan, not the government plan. Then people ask me, they say, Ed, what do you mean by the government plan? Well, I just told you what it is. You know what the government plan is? Doing nothing sitting there and letting it happen to you. And every day that goes by, this debt, this unpaid tax debt in your IRA, that decay, let's call it that now, that tax decay is growing, building, compounding in the very money you're counting on for retirement. So you're going to have a decaying account when you need it the most. And, and you hit on a good point where a lot of people think, oh, I have to do it all or nothing. This whole premise right. of doing it a little bit every year. And that's part of where you have an advisor and you have a team that, and we use software, software that can help us show the client if we do X amount each year, what is it going to do? Because for some, if it's over 65, they may have some Medicare surcharge penalties if they do more in that particular year. Obviously, under 65, that's a big couple of years. If somebody retires at 62, there could be two or three big years where you could do a larger Roth conversion, right. but it, just understanding the pros and cons and knowing the facts, because you don't want to be hit with a tax bill at the end of the year that you were not fully aware of. And that's the type of thing that if you aren't getting that type of planning, and, and Ed, you and I both know you can't do it on your own, right. but most advisors, they are just, they're focused on the investments. And, and you talked earlier, like if, if I get you a 6% return versus an eight, you know, that's not going to change your world, that 2% difference. But if we can be smart and save on taxes now and in the future, now we're bringing some real value to your overall plan that you've spent a lifetime building. Well, on tax re on investment returns, you're right. You're talking about 6%, 8%. They're points. Uh, when you lose money in taxes, you don't lose it in two or three points. You lose it in chunks, 30 40%. That's a big hit. You can actually make a fortune in good tax planning. And that's what the book is about. And that's what you're well-trained on and our advisors are. Uh, but you're right. Most advisors are focused only on helping you build. I call that the first half of the game, the building, the accumulating, the saving, the investing. And that's critical. Obviously, you have to build something uh, because if you have nothing to protect, you don't have a problem. So, but that's only the first half. The first half is accumulation, but then protecting it. So when you take it out, you can keep more of your hard earned money. And that has to start like yesterday. If you're hearing this every day that goes by, you have a bigger problem the next day. 